are going to look at factoring trinomials. So we've pulled out the greatest common factor before. Now we're going to talk about factoring trinomials. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to start with some greatest common factor stuff. First we're going to talk about, this is a quadrilateral trinomial, right? x squared minus 13x plus 30, right? Yeah. Okay. What does the product of two binomials look like? X squared minus So they look like this, right? In this case, it'll be something like this. Product means multiply, something like that. Okay. Are all of the binomials expressions below equivalent to the ones on top? We're going to talk about that in a second. If you factor each polynomial expression in two groups, first two, last two, what do you get? And which ones below do you think would lead to the correct answer? Why do you think so? So those are just some questions that we'll keep in mind as we're going through this. But now you guys are going to do this problem. Okay, all these problems. See how we're doing it here? Each little box has two different answers in it. Okay? We've got x squared minus 1x. We know we could take out an x and get x minus 1, right? Negative 12x plus 30, we took out a 6, and we got 2x minus 5. Everybody see that? Okay. Now, you're going to, for each one of these, you're going to do that. Okay. We're going to talk about why these problems are the ones we chose. Okay. So, I want you to look at this all of these problems down here below relate to this right here. What I'm trying to find is two binomials that when I multiply them gives me this answer. Now, do you see, what does this end with? 30. 30. Do you see how all of these end in 30? The second ones all end in 30? Okay. Do you see how they all start with x squared? Yes. Okay, the first ones all start with x squared. And what do we want the middle to give me give us? 13x. 13 13x. Do you see like negative 4 and negative 9 gives me negative 13? Negative 5 and negative 8 give me negative 13. So we're gonna I want you to do all of these where you factor out the greatest common factor, and then we're gonna see which one of these is going to work to be the actual one that we use for this problem. Okay? So I'm gonna give you 10 minutes to do this? No, let's let's try five. It should be really quick. So five minutes to do this. I'm going to do one more problem with you, and then I'm going to let you do the rest on your own. What does x squared minus 3x have in common? One and a x. So we're just left with x minus 3. All the first ones are going to be like that. You're just going to take out an x. Because x, because you have to have a negative 3x right here. So x times what gives me negative 3x? x times 3x. Okay. Negative 10x plus 30, what do they have in common? x, 10. 10. They do not have an x in common. They, oh, they do the have a 10. I'm going to take out a negative 10 in this case. Leaving me with x minus 3. I don't think it's 10. What goes into both 10 and 30? 10. Wouldn't you put one on the You can put a 1 right here, yes. I'm not with negative 10. Would you put a 1 there? Right here? Yeah. You can, but you don't need no, to. The negative, instead of negative 10. Like, no, you would take out a negative 10, right? Because 10 goes into both 10 and 30 each. Why is there an X on the outside? Of this one? Because yeah. these both have an X in them, so I took an X out. Wait, why you put Do you see? Shh. See that both these have an X with them. That's what they have in common. So that's why there's an X on the outside of both. There's only there's not an X out of both of these, so I couldn't take out an X for that. Okay, go guys. Give me about five minutes.
save these ten John. We've got about four more minutes. Does it have to be like the exact same number? Because it's like four plus two is nine and three. Nine. So say nine. going guys. Get as done as many as you can in the next three minutes. Okay. So for this, I get ugh, a broken pen, apparently. Okay. I get x times x minus 4. I get negative 3 times 3x three minus 10. Mm -hmm. um, I get x, yep, I get x minus 5, x times x minus 5. I get negative 2 times 4x minus 15. My next row, I get x times x minus 8, negative 5 times x minus 6. I get x times x minus 9, negative... Two times two x minus fifteen. I get x times x minus ten. I get negative three times x minus ten. I get x minus times x minus 12. I get negative 1 times x minus 3. Down here I get x times x minus 1. I get 2 times 7x plus 15. Down here I get x times x minus 2. Here I get 15 times x plus 2. Here I get x times x minus 3. Here I get 2 times 8x plus 15. Here I get x times x minus 5. And here I get 6 times 3x plus 5. Okay. So, are all the polynomials expressions below equivalent to the one above? How do you know? So, yes, they are, because then we add them together, and we get that answer. If you factor each polynomial in groups of two, first and two, what do you get? And we'll put C below, because that's what we did. Which ones below do you think will lead to the correct answer, and why? Which ones 
do you think would lead to the correct answer and why? Do you guys see these? That these two right here, what do these two have in common? The inside part is the same. Okay. Do we see that negative 10 plus negative 3 equals negative 13? Yeah. So do we see that we would have to have x minus 10 times x minus 3, and it could be either one of them could be first, is how we factor this problem. Okay, so this is like a new way that I was trying to get you guys to see how we discover how to factor this. Okay, so let's just look at this old-fashioned way to do it. We've got x squared minus 13x plus 30. Okay, I want to factor it. I want to get two binomials that go like this. You guys like the box the best, most of you, right? Yeah. I'm going to do the box. We can take it back to reverse foil if you want, but I like the box. Okay, so here's my box. We get that x squared was in this first one right here, right? And that 30 is in this last one right here. Yeah. And we get that these two added together has to give me negative 13. Okay, so I'm saying it's got to be what two things multiply to give you 30 that add together to give you 13. So what multiplies to give you 30? There are a couple options. We've got 1 and 30, 2 and 15. We've got 3 and 10, and we've got 6 and 5, or 5 and 6. Okay, which one of those adds up to give you 13? 3 and 10. 3 and 10 adds up to give you 13. What is 6 and 11? 6 and 5. 11. 11. 2 and 15 gives you 17. 1 and 30 gives you 31. Okay? So we're going to have to use 3 and 10. But it's negative 13, right? Which means both of them have to be okay. negative. So we're going to have negative 3x and negative 10x, which means this has to be negative 10, negative 3. But a negative 10 to negative is a? Positive. Positive. So then we're going to get x minus 3 and x minus 10. What do we think? Yes, Jane. For writing it out, though, like it says negative 13x. So yes. would one have to be a positive then? No, like, because a negative 3 plus a negative oh, 10 yeah. is a negative 13, right? And can we, shouldn't only one of them be x because it's only x, it's not x squared? Cause no, because we're adding, remember? Because you're adding, it's just Like 2x plus 3x is 5x, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, if we were using the FOIL method, because some of you like that instead, it's just, I'm just skipping this box part. I'm just writing x and x here. I know this is negative and this is positive, so I know both of them have to be negative, right? So negative plus a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. So I'd have to have two negatives, right? Then I just think, again, I go over here to all my factors of 30, and I'm like, okay, 3 and 10 are the only ones it could be. So foiling is just skipping that box part. I like that box part. It helps me. Yes? was with the front sheet. Yes. Like, we don't know how to add them. Like, do you think, like, I don't get how the adding part works out because we just wrote it out, like, with x, x minus yes. 3. So, like, yes. do we only factor in what's in the parentheses? Right. So, if both your parentheses are the same, you'd only have to use it once. So, we would make this the other parentheses. x minus okay. 10 and x minus 3. Is that the only way you can do it for the same? Because you can't mm -hmm. combine them and put the same? Correct. Okay. Okay. We're going to try another one. We can have a choice. Did you like this whole write out all the different ways and find the correct option? Yeah. You guys hate that. Okay. You can totally do it that way if it makes sense to you. But let's just skip this for right now and talk about x squared 
plus 3x minus 28. Okay? So you do not have to write this on a separate sheet of paper. You can just say I'm ignoring this and write this right here on your paper. Uh, my handwriting is too big. I can't fit it in there. Okay. So I'm going to do the box again. I know x squared goes right here, correct? Yes. Where does 28 go? Negative 28? It's on the bottom. 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 Right. right. All right. What are numbers that multiply to give you 28? We got 1 and 28, right? 2 and 14. 3 and... No, 3 doesn't go in there. 4 and 7, though, do, right? 5 doesn't, 6 doesn't, and then we're back at 7. So that's it. So it's between these three. Okay. Which ones, when I add or subtract them, gives me 3? 4 and 7. 4 and 7. Which one would have to be the positive one? Which one would have to be the negative one? So, hold on. Caleb's lost. Hold on. Right, Tish. You can't just forgot. So, you said 4 and 7, right? So, that's the 1. And you said what? So, 4 to 7, because I know 7 minus 4 gives me 3, mm -hmm. right? Why 3? I think you're supposed to go 3 or how it goes in between 3 and 3. So, this, these numbers are all multiples of 28. Now we want to figure out which ones go here so they oh, add okay. to give me 3. Oh, okay. okay? So 4 would have to be the negative. negative because I want to subtract, right? And we'll be left with a positive answer. Seven. So I know negative 4 plus 7, that's 3, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to make 1 negative 4, 1 positive 7, and then I'm going to put what's on the outside, right? So this would be x plus 7, and this would be x minus 7. So that's x plus 7, x minus 4. How are we feeling? Not that good. Not that good? Okay. Let's try some more practice problems then. We're going to put the rest, we're going to put this aside. I'm going to pull it out again probably on Thursday. But let's put it aside right now. See if it helps us more later. And we are going to just, you can write it in your notebooks. You can write it on the back of this paper somewhere. We're just going to try some practice ones, okay? So let's try... X squared plus 3X, what, honey? Yes. So, again, we know x's go here, right? Which ones help us with 28? 4 and 7. I need this to be positive, so I need the bigger number to be positive and the smaller one. Okay. All right, so I've got x squared plus 3x minus 18. Okay. So we had example 1, 2, we're going to call this example 3. What two numbers... I'm going to set up my box first. I'm going to slow down. Sorry, guys. You know how I like to speed up. Let me slow down. We agree that this is an x squared right here, correct? We agree that this bottom rate is negative 18. Pardon for the interruption. Attentional staff at this time, could you please dismiss the boys' freshman and JV basketball team to use their bus at the left deck pool door? Once again, please dismiss the boys' freshman. And JV basketball team can use their bus at the left end pool door. Thank you. Make sure you guys know what the homework is for tonight. Okay. So now we've got this negative 18. So we need two numbers that multiply to give us negative 18. What will they add to get? Three. Three. Okay. All right. So 18, we've got 1 and 18. 2 and 9. 3 and 6. Three and six. Does 4 go in there? No. 5? No. And we're back at 6. Okay, so it's one of these. So all of them should be negative? No, just one, right? Just one of them should be negative. Okay, so which ones, when I subtract them, will give me 3? Okay, so which one needs to be positive? 6. Which one needs to be negative? 3. And why does 6 have to be positive? Because it has to be the positive answer. 
So we've got negative 3x and positive 6x, so that gives me x and 6. Matter, x and negative 3. Negative 3x and 6x, like no, if you switch these two places, it's totally fine. So remember, if we're doing it the reverse FOIL, it's the same thing. We put the x's down. What numbers multiply to give us 18? We find that 3 and 6, and we just plug them in. Again, it doesn't matter which one comes first, which one comes second. So it's like how much you want us to write the parentheses like that? Yes. Yeah. Like how much you want us to write? Yeah. Okay. Can you do the other one? Of course. Is this all we're doing for the homework? This is all you're doing for the homework. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's try another one, though. How about x squared plus 5x plus 6? Yeah, you guys want to try it on your own? To make more sense, you just teach us the reverse formula and just like ignore the box because it, it teaches us the box going the wrong way around. So, Koi, I have found in my 13 years of teaching that some kids, if they get FOIL really easily, don't need the box. Some kids, if they get the box, cannot do reverse FOIL without it. So, that's why I teach both. <laughs> should be trying this. There's no excuses. Okay. So even if you don't understand it, you can make, you can start the part of the box, right? I'm going to give you guys one more minute and then I'm going to go over it. So for my box people, we know that there's an x squared here, correct? We know there's a positive 6 here. Okay, what are multiples of 6? And? Which ones add together to give me 5? 2 and 3. So we have x and 3, x and 2. So my answer is x plus 3, x plus 2. Feel pretty so good about this? What is, what is, what is, you have 6 minus 1. Oh, so I had people say they had, let's see it, let's see. We had x squared, right, and you had 6, yeah. and you said you did x minus 1? My x minus 1 and then x plus 6. And you had x plus 6. What is 6? And negative 1 gives you 5, right? Mm -hmm. But what does a negative 1 and a positive 6 give you? Negative 1. Negative 6. That's why this doesn't work. So you have to see what... See how this is a positive 6 right here? A negative 1 times a positive 6 gives you a negative 6. Our phones should be away because I'm in the middle of teaching right now, right? Okay, I'm going to do one more. One, I'm going to do two more. Okay, here's another one. We've got x squared plus 5x minus 6. So I hear some people saying, kind of loudly, that they don't understand. So let's walk our way through this one together. What's the first thing you need to do? Step number one is you're going to make a box. Or a square, you're right, because it's not three-dimensional. Where am I going to put my x squared? The upper left. And what's going to go at the bottom right? 
Negative six. What two numbers multiply to give me six? I've got one and six, two and three. Which one's going to give me negative six? Three. One and six. One and six. Which one's going to be negative? Negative. negative. Now look, I've got a positive five. I want them to add together to give me five. Negative six. So it's going to be a negative one, positive six, right? And a positive six. Okay? Because that would give me x minus 1 times x plus 6. Okay, I'm going to give you a harder one. Are you ready? No, I can't do this one. Well, it's going to take practice, Jade. It's going to take practice. I am. It's okay. All right. Let's try this one. I'm going to give you a tricky one. Are you ready? x squared minus 10x. Y plus 21Y squared. Oh, I added a Y in there. Let's do it together. Okay, let's do it together. We know X squared still goes on this upper left-hand side, right? Mm -hmm. We know 21Y squared goes in this bottom. Shh. 21 squared goes in the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What times what gives me 21? We've got 1 and 21, 2 doesn't go in there, 3 and 7. Okay, and that's it. Which ones add together to give me 10? 3 and 7. 3 and 7, right? And they're both going to be negative. negative. Okay? The only thing different here is we're going to have to go x minus 3y. Shh. And it's going to be x minus Seven y. We just put a y for them. Okay? It doesn't change anything else except for these last ones. We just put a y there. So we will just have x minus 3y and x minus 7y. That's it. So we have an x y in the box, but you're going to see the y because you're Right, because negative 3y times negative 7y is, yeah, we didn't times anything by x. You guys ready to try the homework? Nope. Yeah. Okay. Try the homework. I will come around to help. I'm going to stop the recording. Though. Like just to have one? I bet you can find that online, Caleb. Might need be nice.